Hello and welcome to the Arshan XP webinar. My name is Zoltan Tull. Over here is our resident architect, as always, Mr. Ilés Bab. Hi there. This is the second installment of our Interior Design Essentials webinar series. Last time uh, we talked about the basics and the, and the fundamentals of how to handle interior design in Arshan XP. We looked at how to handle, how to create a very simple 3D model and how to use that to make a very stunning render at the end. We use some, some tools to add um, finish, finishes, materials, um, we use some paintings, and we also added some objects. But now we are And also we did some basic uh, documentation, that's which right. we will cover later. That's right, that's detail. right. So this time we are going to look at a very specific topic. We'll look at bathroom design, and that entails actually a lot of things. Uh, yeah. Tiling, tiling styles, quantity takeoffs, and you know documentation as always. Um, there will be some things what we are going to cover at a later stage, but we will talk about them briefly today as well. Uh, as always, we are going to look at one of the uh, example projects that we got from our clients, and we will illustrate the certain tools through this particular project. So, one of the things that to talk about before before we move into this topic in in full, and that's actually a reminder of, of what we talked about last time, is imagine that you have a three D model and you want to handle it somehow. So we first start with a couple of tips on how to handle your model, but before that happens, I just want to remind you that as always, you're welcome to comment on this show on the right-hand side of this, of this window where you can ask your questions. At the end, we are going to devote a couple of minutes to talk about the answers to that. So one, one thing to sort out right off the bat is how to handle your, your, uh, your model. So basically, what are the tools? So we, we talked a little bit about setting up perspective views and things like that, but maybe a quick refresher on how to handle your model would be, would be handy. Yeah, actually, um, here when you have this um, project open or any of your projects open, uh, you have uh, a, a, a default button that you will use uh, a lot, and today's session I will also use a lot, uh, is that is how to switch between the drawings. So now I have this uh, drawing opened here and if I click here on this button, this is the enlarge or magnify active window, I can swap the, the, the content and if I select another content, th then I can move on to the, to the next one. So this is something that uh, we just would like to uh, highlight that this is a very handy tool um, and, it's, and it's right there so you don't have to start uh, by organizing your content. And many times today I will also enlarge the screen. Uh, I will work in so-called full screen when I just click here on this button mm -hmm. and I just make it large. Sometimes I will use the quick shortcut button for that, which is F to the function, uh, the second function key on your keyboard. Uh, but without that, you are you're just fine by just clicking here. So you can you can also work in a in a in a one single window style and still developing the whole document. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the project which we will uh, use today. It's a project, uh, it's a version of a project designed by one of our interior designers, users. And uh, it's now plain white, uh, only the walls and the ceiling and the, and the floor is there. Also there is some sanitary wear which we will show you a few options how you can download and how you can uh, use uh, sanitary wear objects. Uh, and, and from where you can download these uh, mostly free uh, objects, nearly 99% free. Yes. Uh, objects and how to use them and at the end we would like to also introduce how you can make uh, quantity takeoff out of this, uh, this this whole design. Now again for the sake of simplicity and easy understanding we are working on a small project but everything that we do is uh, also available on any size of and any type uh, of project um, either horizontally or vertically and uh, also uh, it is not limited to these function. I mean, you can also decorate exterior uh, surfaces as well, pavement and uh, all other things. Now we are introducing this for interior design purposes. That's right. One, one thing to, to clear up right <coughs> off the bat is when it comes to, to decorate uh, your walls or, or any kind of surfaces with tiling, uh, you could be always, always use like one piece of texture for that. But if you use the tiling methods that we are going to show now, you will, you will achieve uh, two goals, basically. One, the tiles would be part of your quantity takeoff, so you have exact yes. estimations. And two, you have a better control on the, the layout and how the, the, um, the tiles are spread. So let's talk about tiling design, how that looks like. So what are the tools that we have in terms of, of uh, tiling these surfaces? Yeah, we have the tool, it's a dedicated tool in the interior design um, palette uh, at the top uh, of the screen. It's here. As you can see now, we are seeing the 
you know, the building tools, but there's the, there's the interior design and there's the tiling. There are a lot of uh, separate things that you can do with the tiling. And you can either uh, find these tools at the top of the screen and select the command and then work with something. Or when you already have a surface like, like we have now, then you can direct click on that surface and then, then uh, use a command. And very important, now we are using the, the tiling tool to tile surfaces, to, to add, to, to list and create tiling. But uh, sometimes the, the name could be a little bit misleading because it's not only tiling. You can also use this for painting. You can also mm -hmm. use this for any sort of other decoration because the tiling is actually built upon two things. It's one of the background area, the so-called tiling area, the, the area itself, which is by default already colored or textured. It's, it's your choice. I will show you how to do that. And the other thing on top of that, uh, that area is the tiling itself, which can be uh, regular tiles or also tiles that you design your, by yourself. I'm just stressing these out because we do not have the, in the short time, we do not have the time to cover all these, but it's worth mentioning at the beginning. So now how to tile a surface. Now, if you would like to tile an existing wall, then um, I think now the best is if I just right click on this surface and I bring up this uh, local menu, the, the context sensitive menu. Now, actually, there is two ways to, to, to reach a context sensitive menu. One is if you directly just right click there and then you see the list of um, commands appearing. Or the other option is I just hit escape several times to get rid of the selection. Uh, the other thing is that if I left click here then see this, this floating bar appears which you can point any uh, put anywhere aside and see this this string here this points to the, the to the place where I clicked so this determines that whatever I see here and also the, the sub menu is connected to that surface so either you right click there or you left click there and the uh, appearing floating bar gives you the possibilities so now I just right click there and I select uh, tiling and there is something called the tiling on wall side and I can either tile only this surface or all the walls and then this dialog brings up which allows me to set up several sort of different uh, type mm -hmm. of design. We will also use mosaic tiling later. Well, let's just go with rectangular for now. Yes, yes. Now I, I just, take. I just uh, work with the rectangular uh, tiling and actually the first step for the tiling that you need to set up is the material. Actually name will come with the, with the material so but you can rename it to anything else. This will be important for listing. But if you go into the libraries and you search either in, in your models already used uh, materials or you go to the, to the libraries, you will find tile materials. You will find all those here, either indoor or outdoor materials. And you can, you can just search uh, for, for materials, existing materials, uh, right away existing materials inside uh, the software. Now again, just as we mentioned, I believe uh, last time, this is a this is a narrow selection of of of, of offline tiles. Uh, if you would like to use custom tiles that you find online, uh, the day before we we covered that how you can visit a website, find a pattern, right click, copy, and paste, and use it as a material. So you need to first turn any sort of source into a material, and then it appears here or in in other libraries, and then you can select that uh, tile, for example, which is now vertical vertically shaped uh, tile. When you click OK, the software will recognize the size of the material that you set up on uh, based on that. Uh, these are the factory settings, texture. right? Well, these are the set factory settings. If, if this is something that you imported, then these are the, uh, are the settings that you define when mm -hmm. you set up that, OK, this will be the texture and this will be the physical size. So now these width and height uh, are set by default uh, from red from the, from the material and all the rest here, like the thickness of the tile, the grout depth and the, and the tile grout is something that you can set up. Now there is uh, something uh, determining what you will cover. Now we will first work with the whole area um, tool and in this case I don't need to define any sort of value here because I just really would like to, to tile the Otherwise whole. Otherwise you would be able to limit to a certain uh, number of columns and rows. Yes, yes, yes. See, see if, I, if I'm if i here, I can define what I would like to and how many tiles I would like mm -hmm. to uh, put them exactly horizontally and vertically. But if I just select this option, it actually makes this whole setting disappear because from that point on it's meaningless. And then I will just select uh, the rotation if I would like to use any. And I can also set up some sort of pattern shift or row shift 
which uh, gives uh, other uh, opportunities as well, of course. But now I just keep it simple and I click OK. And then the software now tiles all the surfaces. It actually goes around and recognizes all the, all the surfaces in this room and tiles uh, the, the whole area. What now, about the floor? How do you do yes, that? Yes, the floor is, is something similar. You can use the tiling tool and here you will find uh, tools for tiling walls, slabs and, and, and other things. But if you just would like to tile something that is right in front of you in the 3D, you just right click there and you say tiling. And then there's the, for example, tile the full area. You can also, of course, tile uh, areas like halfway this pattern, halfway the other pattern, but this will, we will cover uh, with another example later. So let's just go with tiling full area. And um, I think here I should go with another version of this material, which is like this, uh, it's like the square uh, shape uh, version of the same pattern. These are actually patterns that are built into this uh, project uh, because we already used it. But actually you can um, bring in fabrics like, like just we did with this uh, here. So I just click OK. Again, uh, this will be the size of the tile itself. Uh, that's the thickness route. And this is just a small preview. I click OK. And I think this time it will be a bit more visual because uh, now I'm allowed to pick a point, a starting point, from where from, I would like to start. From there you start with a whole piece. And then yes. I assume that you can also determine the direction. I mean, now it's not that relevant because it's a rectangular. I mean, it's a, it's a square tile. Well, it could be. It could be because if I click here and then I move it 45 degree angle, then I can get a, set up a diagonal uh, pattern. Or if I just align it next to the existing tiles, mm -hmm. see, it, it appears in, in kind of out of the room, outside this 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 counter, but it of course it's not ma it's not nothing um, that's important here because actually the software will tie this area, not okay. the not the external area. So it, that was just a representation of the of the preview, and then we have everything tiled and covered. And from this point on, we will show that later. But from this point on, the software actually knows the exact amount of tiles that's necessary to cover this whole surface with these uh, these tiles here. Now, what if I want to be a bit more elaborate in this? How about I want to add some, some extra shapes or forms or, or design elements, maybe change a couple of tiles? Yeah, for that, I think I have a view already saved. Let me just go through these views. Uh, while you navigate, I'm just reminding everybody that these are pre-saved views, perspectives, which are very good for this particular situation where yeah. you're working in a very narrow <coughs> area where navigating with the, with the mouse, the scroll and shift key would be a bit cumbersome. So you can just preset views and just navigate where you want to go. Yes, I actually use uh, saved views uh, a lot, not only for the clients, but also for myself. Just like this, uh, I, I can set, easily set up things uh, that I know that I will work a lot with and I just would like to have, have a, a nice and easy access to those. I can use the page up, page down uh, button just as you described to navigate through these views and quickly find something and then, then start working with that. Now, the, the reason why we came here is that I would like to show you how you can change a few of the tiles that, that you pick yourself to change. In that case, you just right click on a tile and you say that Okay, let's just change the selected tile. This, that's the selected tile. And, and then you can also select other tiles in a, in a pattern that you prefer. Mm -hmm. Now, this will be a vertical um, set of tiles, yeah, like that. And then when you click, when you hit enter on your keyboard, then the software offers this modify the tiling dialog box, which allows you to change many things, but by default, only the, the, the options enabled will have an effect uh, mm -hmm. anywhere. So now I just select this and I think I will go with this pattern. I don't want to, to have a big difference, but I definitely would like to have different set of tiles with this decorative pattern. So I just select this. Okay. See now there's the uh, tile name. There's, there's my tile and only these, that, these tiles that I have selected will be um, changed because of this setting here. I see. So if you hit okay, these, are, these will be changed. Dimensions are the same. Just yeah, it, now it was set to ch to keep the dimension, so it, it will keep the. Okay, so now dimensions. in this case, these these tiles have different namings as well. I'm just asking for this yeah. this for the quantity takeoff sake. So this yes. will be a different category in your quantity takeoff. Yes, this will be this will be a different tile with 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 its own amount uh, in the in the tiling list, which we will uh, show at the end. It's it's actually an Excel file that we that we are talking about. I see. Another question for my part. <coughs> um, maybe this is not the exact time and, uh, and place to talk about this. So what happens if I want to create um, 
like a vertically layered style of, of tiles. And what, what happens if I want to create this kind of style where I want to have certain kind of tiles, then I want to have a boundary and another, another kind, but I don't like want stripes to... stripes or, or something. Yes, but like I don't that. want to change them individually because that would take a lot of time, so... Well, yeah, this, this, is, this is only, I think this is only working if, if, if this is a specific pattern that's, that's, that's irregular, that's not, that, that this is the best way to define. But what you are talking about, it's, it's what we call a set a style set, uh, a, a set of uh, tiles that we store in something, it's a, it's a terminology, an arch line tiles. It works for walls, it works for um, slabs, it works for other, other items as well, and it's applied uh, for the tiles as well. If you would like to set up <coughs> uh, styles for, for tile patterns, then instead of using these tools here, you first need to go to interior properties and tiling. And here, this is a dialogue to, to set up uh, some sort of uh, vertical or horizontal uh, band uh, or stripe list. Now, as you can see here, you can change the direction. Also, you can decide whether you design it from the bottom to the top or otherwise. <coughs> and then now the default um, tile pattern is, is, is something that we used before. It's, it's, it's something that, that's called black. If I click here, we will see a list of styles that's appearing by default when you install uh, the software. There's separate libraries where you can find a predefined set. Now, now I will build up something like this and I will save it uh, on my own. So I will just close it for a while and we will come back later. And uh, I will change the, the height of this uh, band. I think I will use 0.75. I think now I will use my cheat sheet here. Mm -hmm. And um, I will just define that. And in the meantime, you can talk a little bit more about how tilings are uh, created in Archline for different other purposes. So one one thing that could be could be achieved using tiles, as as you said in the beginning, we could use it externally as well. And in in every kind of situation where you want to have um, a quantity take of of a certain amount of things, um, it shouldn't be a tile. It, it doesn't it doesn't have to be a tile. It can be any kind of covering element. Then you can use these these. Uh, these tools for that. One example I can think of is externally for a pavement, for instance, or if you have, if you want to have a plinth around the house where a certain kind of um, item should be used for that purpose. This kind of uh, tiling tools are very good for that because then you have an exact grasp on how many of them are used, and that is very good for actually cost estimation. I think because that way you can keep track of the amount that you have to order. That's, that's one, one example I can think of. And another, and that's going to be a very exciting, you know, very unique way we are going to use tilings now. We are later on going to create uh, certain elements on the, on the walls, and such as mirrors, uh, which, are, which are going to be realized as a tile because the, the tool is very intuitive to handle. So we are going to use that. Obviously, you can, you can do this kind of task with, with an object. But using tiles allows you a lot of, um, freedom in how you want to handle two-dimensional shapes that you want to superimpose on top of surfaces. So I think, I think that's another, another use, but yeah. you know, every time we come up with a new, new use for, for these tools, it turns out that our users are much more knowledgeable and, and much more imaginative on, on how they use this, these elements. So maybe they come up with new and exciting uses which have nothing to do with exact tiles, but they instead rely on the flexibility of how we can distribute these, during, these elements. Yes, yes, yes. I d well, during design here, let me, let me highlight what I'm actually doing uh, besides the, the description, uh, how, what my colleague told you that um, what I'm doing here, I'm just continuously adding an, a new row with new settings, a new row with new settings, and in detail it looks like this. You have a, a row that you already added, or there was only one. You insert a new row, you set up these things, or at least you check these. If there is something, like for example in my case, the following is something similar that I already had. It's uh, the fifth row. Uh, is similar to the third row. Then, in that case, I can, can I can actually I can actually select it before I make a, a copy of this. And when I use insert, then actually these settings were inherited. So now the tile itself simi is similar, but the size of this this stripe is different. So it, I think this is five uh, fifty uh, centimeters, half a meter. Uh, in width, and then I can also say, see where's the top elevation. Uh, I mean, this is the bottom elevation of this, but that's the top elevation of this this uh, stripe here. 
I can also decide from where it is distributed. Now it is decided to be distributed from the left hand side. Uh, that's actually the, always the left hand side surface, uh, left hand side edge of the surface which I'm about to cover. And also it's important to set up the, the grout itself, what will be the color of the grout. This could be white or this could be anything else. Whatever I'm about to set up here, I'm always clicking here, select another thing and then I use that. Now I'm mm -hmm. about to, to use all the same everywhere. Uh, it's some sort of creamy white uh, color and, I'm, I, and if I'm changing the tile itself, I'm just doing the same. I click, in, I click here. I, either check the details or I'm not making any change and just go and find another material and so on. So now the f uh, we, we have all these styles and now we could stop here if the tile uh, style, the set of tiles is actually stopping at this level, which would be fine. But in that case, uh, we would not determine how the top of the wall will, would look like. Now, if we would like to be specific and tell the software that whenever I use this style which I'm about to save soon uh, then I can add the new uh, row on top mm -hmm. of this make it large enough to cover most of my walls I mean this will yes. be two meter tall and you have to sort of negate the texture on it so you have and to then yes and then and then all I have to do is that I'm not using this for tiling I, do, I, I disable the tiling and then I click redraw, so now it disappears. So now it's it, now it's creamy because the, the material cream was set on on that. But if I go here, and I'm I'm uh, I'm certain that I would like to use white or any sort of other material. And I'm looking for a material called white, and go there, and okay, and then redraw, and then from that point on, whatever surface I uh, cover which is uh, inside this height level, like, like all of these together, it's, it's more than four meter. Uh, it's actually 4.31. Mm -hmm. Then everything will be with this uh, pattern at the bottom up to 2.31 and all above white painted. A uh, question from my part, uh, what's <coughs> the, why did you do it that way? Why didn't you just leave it empty? If I leave it empty, then uh, there is a, there is a, a setting for the, for the wall itself. The wall itself has a setting for its one and other side. And it's like, you know, with transparent images, if you put a transparent image on something, then when you change that thing, this transparent part will also change. If I don't want that, then I, I determine that okay, I so would like to use it. If I, if I just would like to keep it on, intact and, and leave it as it goes with the changes of the wall, then I just don't add this this top. Uh, Perfect. So now whatever hap happens with the wall behind the tiling, uh, it's, it's not going to have an influence on this white part above the, the side. Yes, yes. So, so from now on, whatever I do with the wall behind, it will always keep being white. So I think this is this is uh, this is something that I like to to, to use because uh, otherwise uh, I might have a result just yes. for an accidental change that I didn't want. How do we place this onto the wall? So now, yes, before we place it, we need to save it. Uh, so I will just click here and I click new and then I will name it. Now, as you can see, this is a stylus with, with so-called folders and subfolders or categories. If you don't use any of those or if you don't type new one, then the then this style will be at the same level as this black uh, style now. I will just name it Albus uh, by just using one of my tiles name, Albus01. Uh, and let's say, okay, that's it. And now it's also appearing there. So if I can close this and I say, okay, from this point on, I can use a tool to cover a surface. But for now, I just erase this here. I just right click here and I say, okay, delete, delete all tiling from this uh, wall. So it disappears. And then now if I right click there and I say tiling, but instead of tiling on wall side, I, I choose select and place tiling style. And I will go with all walls because mm -hmm. I would like to use that all, all around and then make changes on certain walls. So I just click on all walls and then I select the style if it was not selected already and I click OK. And then now the software goes through all the walls and, and changes the style. The, that's right. That's, that's great. Now, I have one <coughs> question regarding this because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what the answer would be, but let's, uh, let's look at it nevertheless. Yep. So there are certain parts in this design. Let's uh, look at the, um, just trying to navigate over that here. So here behind this element, this wall element, is the wall covered? Yes. That means that it, it's, it's now cover, covered two times, right? Once yes. in the back and on, on the foreground as well. So yes, yes. 
So um, now, now because of how this this project was modeled, it was actually modeled very in a very simple way. Let me just uh, reveal this tr this trick. It was actually one wall and another in front of that. So when you cover a surface of a wall and when you tell the software to to cover that surface, it won't consider unconnected walls. Mm -hmm. These are not connected together, not co not connected into each other. So now they, they actually behave like to two totally separate walls. So the software covers one and the other. So either you can uh, you can solve this by making them connected or model it somehow else. Or if this was the this was the easiest choice, then you can still make changes on this wall. And uh, this is what I will do. I just click on the 2D. Now I would like to show introduce mm -hmm. a, a new thing. I click here, and I use the local menu. And notice that now I was intentionally clicking on this side, not this side of the wall. Because when I click here, then by this click, I already tell the software that I'm about to cover or edit uh, the tiles on this surface. And then I go to tiling and there is something called the tiling on wall side. Now this allows you to place down this uh, front of view of the wall, which is like we are looking at this yes, wall. It's, from a, it's this, a wall this elevation. Point. It's a wall elevation, yeah just only with the decoration. And now, now I can see how it is decorated in detail. And see, it's not that much uh, strong in visual, but now the top of this uh, screen is changed. I can't access now uh, temporarily the, the other modeling tools because now I'm working with the tiling. So I have the, this tiling menu appearing here. And in this tiling menu, there are, there are two main areas. See, now this was what I was talking about when I mentioned background area. And this is, this is the tiling on top of the background area. And this is just two ways how I can close this whole thing. So if I, if I hit escape now, or if I click on finish, then nothing will happen. Then, then nothing happened. I just actually placed down this for perhaps uh, some sort of documentation purposes, but we actually have a wall, wall layout tool, which at the end we will uh, cover, I think. And then I can just visualize it. But if I if I did it accidentally, I still have an option to go back to edit this styling once it's over there. I don't have to click here again and, and go through all these steps. I just click here and I use the local menu of it and I say continue tiling. So now the software understands, okay, that was a, that was a tiling layout. So let's work on that. Uh, so what I'm about to do is actually, as you, as you remember, we built this up on stripes. Yes. And these, these stripes are actually background areas, one background area, 75 centimeter tall, another one, another tall height, and so on and so on. And these are areas that I can edit with this here. If I click here and I select, see, the software recognizes these areas. Yes. And when I click here, then I can check and change the boundaries mm -hmm. of these areas. And just as in case of other things like, uh, you know, worktop or slab or even wall, you can just click on this and say, I would like to pay, uh, place it uh, parallelly, uh, shift it left side, like four tiles. And then I just hit enter and then it's done. So I it's see. removed. So this could actually be also used to, to profile the top of the, of the, of the uh, tiling, right? So yes. if you want to actually we have like a curve or something. We have that? an example to that. We, we, we won't make it curvy, but in case of yes. uh, use, um, now I think the next step I will do that. Uh, when I use the, use the mosaic tiling, uh, mm -hmm. I will actually edit the, the, the top of the, um, this area. So, uh, and one, one more thing. Now, you, you can also insert uh, breakpoints, uh, like these pins here. These are the nodes, we call them. And so if I zoom in and I say, okay, insert a node here. Let's say I would like to place it over uh, here. It's a, it's a very tiny drawing, so over here. Then when I click offset, then oh, from yes, now on, can, I can just... You can shift individual rows as well. Yeah. Yeah, so, so as you, actually the software actually created all the grouts and everything in detail. So you can just decide on which side of the grout you would like to uh, cut this uh, whole thing apart. Even you can uh, cut these tiles halfway um, out and then just hit enter. And then now everything behind these uh, the surfaces is just skipped. It was, it was just removed. So now this is how you can edit. I, th I think I will keep this uh, layout here for a while. And then I go now back and uh, find the, the view where we have a look at this um, surface of the, yeah, of this um, 
shower. So what do we do here? And here uh, I would like to introduce the, the mosaic tiling. There is actually like three or four more other possibilities, but this is something that I can quickly uh, introduce. So I just um, delete the, mm, the, the tiling on this wall surface. And then I right click here and I just use the same tiling, tiling of all side and on this wall only. And then here, see, these are actually all the five, six uh, opportunities, possibilities, like, like by default types that you can use uh, on the surface. There is actually something like the built-in patterns, like, like with, with several other settings, hexagonal and so on. You can also use the uh, mosaic tiling, which I'm about to use. You can even define your own profile for these uh, tiles and so on. Now, what I will do, I will just simply go with this option here and then, it's, then this will bring this uh, option up by default automatically and now I'm, now I'm about, about to select four mm -hmm. different tile patterns for all of these. You can uh, use a maximum of four, right? Maximum four, yeah. So I think I will go with this uh, default one uh, that we worked uh, on a lot uh, today, this one. Then I will select uh, next to it, I think uh, it's this one. And then I go with something like, uh, I think I will go with, with, with something more uh, creamy or, or I think like this here. And then let's use, let's use white, but not this bright white, because I think I use this for coloring the surfaces, uh, like painting them. So I will just go with the, with the one that we already used it. It was simply called white. And this should be this one. Okay, so, so now I did that. If I would like to make an, an, an uneven uh, rate uh, for any of those, so if I would like to make, uh, I don't know, white more influential, then I just dial this up. So if I would like so now to change the percentage of these. Uh, proportion, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now, now these actually share the same amount of, um, surrounded or distributed on this surface, just in a, in a random pattern. So this is actually what the, what the mosaic tiling tool does based on my settings uh, and based on the dimension settings that I'm about to use here. It is actually shuffling these uh, mosaic tiles around and makes a nice random pattern. So I just uh, say, okay, well, all the rest of the settings are, are perfect. So I j I'm just uh, keeping them on and I say, okay. And now the software generates this random list. And when it's done, that's what you get. So if you would like to change this, uh, if you would like to change the height of this, uh, of this Maybe area. Maybe I want to make it uh, on the same level as, yeah. as the other, other tiles. Yeah, so in that case. Uh, do I use the 2D layout? So I spread this out. You can, you can use the 2D layout. And uh, the same way I used the 2D layout just uh, uh, five minutes before, I can do the same thing here in the 3D layout. If I just say that, okay, I edit the background area here, then the software drafts the background area counter here. If the tiles disappear, don't worry, they, they did not disappear really. It's just uh, sometimes the software is just making, getting rid of them because at that point, maybe they are not that much necessary. And some, some, sometimes when the performance drops, the software measures how the, the software performs on that computer. And, it, and, the, and if the performance drops, uh, it is just sk simply skipping the tiles for a uh, temporary, uh, temporary time. So I'm just uh, clicking here and say offset. And uh, I think I just match here. And I hit enter. And then now it should shear the top down. And then now I have this uh, thing here. Perfect. I, I think this is a very good good tool because this just illustrates what we always say that a lot of things in our software can do in 2D and, and 3D as well. Use whichever is more convenient, I think. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm about to show you one more thing. If you would like to remove, like just, we, just as we did here, we removed a part uh, from behind a, a wall surface, an existing wall surface, uh, just for the sake of uh, not having duplicate uh, surfaces decorated with the same tiles. Uh, but uh, there is also another option why you would want to do this, uh, to make space for another sort of tiling or another sort of decoration once you already have it. Because you discuss this with your clients and they decided, well, that, that's a surface where I would see, I would like to see a nice large built-in uh, mirror surface, for example. So in that case, I, th I will show you here. In that case, I just do the same thing. I click on this surface, on the internal surface of the wall, and if for any reason, I'm, I'm about to show you this here, if for any reason uh, another object is picked, you should just use this quick selection uh, toolbar. It's, it allows you to jump to the wall. 
instead of the something else was selected. Mm -hmm. So I click here, see this is the, the area that I'm about to tile and I use uh, the local menu, tiling, and I just use the same tiling on the wall side. And I just place it down and see now, I think this is also something important here uh, because there was two options, tiling on wall side and tiling on wall, wall part only. Now, because I have chosen uh, tiling on wall side and this is a one single wall designed by me. Uh, it's showing the, all I the two sides, the even with the connection. Sides are, I see both, both sides. sides are shown. The both sides, yeah. If I choose the wall part only option, then I get either this part or this part based on my selection. So this way you can uh, separate these surfaces if you if you want and work them uh, on a separate layout. But now it's it's perfect for me. So I just select this layout and I still have these options here. And uh, see this here, this is add, add new background area. Add new background area will actually remove the previous one, shear it down or erase and everything replace with another. And, and it replaces it with another one. So I just use uh, the add new tile, add new tile background area. And then I pick a corner point, another corner point, another corner point here, and another corner point here. I don't have to follow the grouts, but it's just prettier now if I use this. And then I just click here, and then I let's just change it to white. Okay, let's make it white. So now if I just close this, and I set up the camera, we will see that we have this whole surface mm -hmm. over there without totally anything on, on it, only pure white. Now, in order to make a, make a mirror over there, you are going to use styling, right? Yes. I could uh, choose a mirror once I erase this area and with, uh, instead of white, I could, I, I could use the uh, mirror um, option. But in that case, it's, it's more like um, a mirror layer instead of a mirror panel uh, there. Mm. Because now if I'm using the tile, I actually paste the panel over there with a certain size. So um, instead of texturing it, I really literally tile it using the tiling tool. But because now I already have the tiling layout over there again, I just select it and I use this um, local menu, continue tiling, and then I add tiles onto this surface, which will be a rectangular profile. I go to the libraries. I have something called mirror. I think I will go with this one and uh, now I should set up the size now because I already measured it before and I know what uh, grout size and what tile size uh, I'm working with I will use a width of 2.02 it's 2 meters and 2 centimeters and the height I think it's it's around uh, 0.8 Later I can change it or I can just skip it, go back and, and measure it, but I, I'm, I'm certain that these are the values. And then instead of setting up a whole bunch of tiles here, I actually would like to only paste one. So I just say given row or column and I, did, and I set up one and one. So it's actually only if one you tile. click update now, it just redraws. Yes. And now there's only one more thing left here. See the default setting was, was rotate left because I used it a lot before. Uh, but or originally it's already rotated, so I don't have to rotate it. So I just go with an original setting and then now it's there. Mm -hmm. So if I click OK, then remember how I placed this whole thing on the uh, slab. It works now the same. I just set up the starting point and then I can set up the tilt. No, but I actually now snap it to the already existing ones and now I have that over there. In the same way, let me just quickly repeat that I can do this here. So what was the what was the um, initiation order, it's like add new. I just, you know, design the counter and then First I select place it with a, with a white material. With a white material. It was I think the bright white. Light. Yeah. And then I just add the tile here, which if I remember well, it was 0 0.81 and 1. 0.21 update that's it now let's just paste just it over there it and right. align it it's always Perfect. click align click and then it's there so now i can close this and i have all the areas and surfaces covered decorated with all these um furniture and sorry uh, tile behind the furniture 
and I, I because I did not save this view looking uh, behind I just open up the uh, perspective dialog and I just move this little blue dot and you just this turn around and save this thing here and I just save it add it okay. add it to the list so apart from the tiles there's a lot of other things going on in this bathroom so let's talk about the the sanitary there because uh, I think through them we can illustrate how you can connect to external or maybe yeah offline libraries to bring in new elements yeah so let's see what kind of opportunities there are. well we we mentioned many times the 3d warehouse that's a useful source it's uh, if uh, you cannot find an object someplace else warehouse is something that is uh, is managed by a lot of people literally thousands uh, perhaps millions I don't know but but thousands for sure manage content over there they upload their own content sometimes makers sometimes enthusiasts so you will find sanitary wear there definitely sometimes even for pro producers but if you would like to go for sure and you would like to just uh, pick up something from a manufacturer it's always worth trying first these BIM libraries BIM object could be a good source it's mainly for uh, building um, parts or building structure but you will also find many other things decorative items as well and sanitary wear a lot uh, and also there is something called Synchronia showroom sanitary wear and and uh, cadenas sanitary wear wear is I think the starter because it's 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 all about sanitary wear it's all about all these tiny details chrome um, surfaces and 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 other details like only also hangers and towel holders and, and things like that that you can find over there uh, this might not work by default so you need to make uh, be aware that if you click here and the software uh, highlights that okay this is not part of your software library yet and don't worry it. this is uh, this is something that you can download freely mm. from but, the, but, it's, but it's free and it's and free that, that's it's something free. that is being it maintained. comes with the default library of 10 makers uh, for free built in and uh, if you register on a home page described on the page which, which leads uh, from here to the uh, to, to the proper page if you register there you can also access other free libraries uh, just to, just <coughs> one more word about the the uh, showroom that's that's our own uh, content library yeah and the special thing about it is that it's it's a, it's having a large amount of um, manufacturer items so you're not only having the 3D element, but you can be 100% sure that this looks like, this looks exactly and handles exactly like the real, product, the real yeah. product. And and that is, again, better for your cost estimation because you will know exactly what kind of products you have in your design, which actually takes us to the next topic, which is quantity takeoff. So imagine that, let's suppose that we are done with the design phase. Obviously, we skipped a couple of steps, but mm -hmm. let's see that we are at the end of the design phase and now we want to get some documentation out of this. So how do we handle quantity takeoffs? And let me just phrase the question this way. How can we get data out of this? Now, actually, the data is already there. We just need to extract it uh, somehow because now the surfaces are literally tiled with, with real 3D tiles. So now from this point on, the, so the software already knows uh, what to do with this when I instruct it to do so. So well, when I go to the documentation part, even those areas that I did not place a layout uh, of on this drawing will be listed in an Excel file. So I go to the quantity takeoff, uh, drop, drop it down, select Excel list, and I go with not interior calculation, that's for something else. I will go with tiling. And this tiling layout gives me a lot of separate offers that I can just select. Now, keep that in mind that if you used tiling in a way that, uh, that we used, we always covered wall surfaces, we always covered slab surfaces. On that case, in that case, this, these two options are perfectly enough. If you picked up items from here, from the left-hand side, and you drop it on a, wall, on a door surface, for example, and you choose to tile that, you can even do that. But that comes with, with a few limitations, but you can do that. And in that case, other is also an option that you should use. If you tiled roof surfaces, then this is something that you need to turn on. I did not cover these surfaces, so I will just keep uh, going with the walls and slabs. But you can also cover other areas. I will override the previously created uh, Excel file that I did uh, here for practice. So I just click Create, Save. And then the software uh, brings up this uh, tiling list in Microsoft Excel. And then I can see the name of the tile, uh, the pattern of the tile, uh, also some sort of description if there was any. 
and of course the size and the area covered with these uh, tile uh, patterns here. I Even the mirrors we, are here. I see that we haven't submitted any price values. Where can I do that in the software? I can do that in the software, but uh, sometimes because you know uh, prices change from uh, distributor to distributor. Uh, mostly, in my experience, people just simply uh, list an empty um, tile li list with with no price, and then they change the price here. So you can you can uh, paste it as a as a beam um, option or a beam um, information into the into the software, but uh, most people just do it in the in the Excel file. Perfect. Uh, so this is the summary. You will whenever Archline creates a, um, an Excel file, it's always coming with the first page of summary, and then you will find the areas in detail, and then you will find the tiles uh, in detail. So it's it's perfectly listed everything here, how much uh, and how many. Uh, surfaces and tiles were used here and an important and interesting thing here is how to maintain this information I mean there's a lot of rows appearing here so how can I determine yes, how that there is a wall with the... an ID and what's this here I don't know well actually it's not that much difficult to find because this is the number which is a lot of help when you would like to find that there is a wall with number 180 I did not determine this value so the software automatically numbers the walls and when I would like to find this what's on uh, 180 I just go back to the software and I use this menu here this is a selection menu here see it with this little arrow here and I go to the by properties option I select ID and I just would like to find wall 180 and then the software selects it. Mm -hmm. So that's a very good way to revert back to your model and if you want to change something you can just yes. do it that way. I think it's, it's, it's uh, very useful also on a small project but definitely pretty much useful on a large project when I have a lot of information yes. and uh, you know it's like a hotel with many rooms it's, it's simply <laughs> easier to find this. It's uh, easier to navigate. Yes, yes. Now although we are going to have one separate uh, show on visuals uh, and that would be actually more about renders, but maybe there's a couple of things that you can tell us regarding the visuals, what we can get from, from here. Uh, one, yeah. one example I can, I, can, I can think of is that now this, this mirror, for instance, is not reflecting because this model is not in that kind of yeah. uh, view. But how can we get some more stunning visuals that I could, even at this stage, send to my clients to, to show how the, sub, how the project is going to look like? Well, first things first, uh, if you would like to make renders, you should make sure that the light is hitting your room. Uh, first things first, you need to set up lamps, just as we see in front of us now. You, you need to make sure it's a lamp, it's not just a downloaded object. We will cover this later, but when you download something from Google 3D Warehouse, the software is trying to figure out if it's a lamp or, lamp or something else, and it, it is trying to convert it into a lamp if it's necessary. But other than that, you can also create your own, li own library of lamps. You can just turn any sort of object into a lamp. Now, this here is a lamp. And if you already have lamps uh, defined, which um, I have here in interior and lighting, and I could just place a lamp, then I just select some uh, from the existing libraries. And once again, we will cover this later, how to create your own. And I go to the spotlights library and I select this spotlight. I set up the base offset. I think this should be around, if my memory is correct, it's, it's about two, 298 centimeters. That's about the ceiling level. And I say, okay. And then I just paste one here. And then I would like to set up a, a grid of these things here. Then I just don't click and set up all the other items, but I can select the existing one and I can go and use this brilliant tool, which is the duplicate and it's called Matrix. Well, that's nothing to do with the, with the movie, but it's, <laughs> uh, it's something to set up a grid. So it's, uh, you can set up a number uh, of items horizontally and vertically. And when you say, okay, I would like to have six at this distance, you can even type that this should be, I don't know, 4.5 meters or you, or you just click and then you move up and then the same way you can decide where the, the, the other uh, part will be and then you have this uh, many uh, light sources here. Now if I would like to repeat the same thing here, I just select one, control C, com control copy, pick a point, control V, paste here and let's just repeat this thing. I just select it and I go to edit, duplicate matrix and I just pick a point and then now I will use six but two vertically and I decide to 
distribute it like this. See, now again, a useful thing I think is that now there are points that are easily snapped and th this could result uh, in, in a distortion. A, you know, distortion. I don't want that, so I, I would like to make it certain that it's vertical. So I just keep it around vertical and I just hold shift. I keep holding shift and then I, I move my mouse so now it's sticking to the vertical uh, direction until I keep holding the shift key. So now I click again, I can release the shift key now and I can just determine where the other other is and then this way you can quickly distribute. There is a, there is another tool to, to quick distribution. This is also very much useful for all sort of objects as well. Can we just grab a very quick render on this to yes. see how yes. it looks like? Let's do that. Uh, I think I will find a view where we have a nice um, view like from think here. That, that's good. And I will just do a render. Now this will be a sketch render. And before I do that, let me just quickly show you that actually you can also change the representation style here because sometimes people uh, just would like to send over something quickly, even without rendering. Then you can you can change how the the content looks like. You can change it to like you know only a contour drawing, uh, realistic, which is also introducing some sort of reflection here. It's not the real reflection as you can see around, yes. but it's already representing introducing reflection. And then you can also decide to have this consistent color, which is very useful for color design and when you would like to discuss the real patterns and colors with your clients. So now if you would like to create a render, you just click here and you say you would like to go with a standalone render. You set up the size and um, I think I will go with, with, a, with a widescreen render and uh, I will use the light sources and I will enable um, sunlight as well and the rest I just don't touch now. Do we have we the light sources on? Um, we will see. Okay. We will see. <laughs> uh, if the light sources are off, we will end up with the dark uh, rendering, but by default lights, when you place them, they are turned on, so likely they will uh, have a visual uh, effect. Uh, what I did before to turn on this option, it's like a global switch. Even if your light sources are on, you can still decide to turn them off for, for daytime rendering, for example. Uh, so you don't have to manually tweak them and change their values or select them and, and fiddling around. But uh, now I just would like to have the opposite, so uh, the opposite effect. So now the software passes the model, model to the renderer, the renderer analyzes this uh, whole scene and starts rendering uh, a default visual, which I will uh, later, well, actually, perhaps they are off because everything is dark. Yes. So I will. Uh, I have a suspicion that that was going to happen. Yes. Let's let's turn them on. And yes. 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 So this is how you can manage actually. This, this well, these are these are on. So there must be something else I forgot about. But I th I, th I have actually an, um, a final version of this project. So I will just simply load that. I will just uh, go and open the final version when I already figured everything out and I turned on everything. And this is the project that I will render but from the exactly, same. That's exactly exactly the kind of scenario when the draft render is very useful because you haven't spent too much time creating a render which turned out to be not not good enough. So you can just take a glimpse at at how it's going to look like, and you saw instantly that there was something wrong with it. So you could amend this problem without having to wait for a lot, very long render to finish. Yes, actually, yeah. that's why the real-time draft is also very useful. We will cover that later. How easily you can set up things and how easily it, it, it helps uh, to make decision. Uh, visualize, I, I, well, I think I turned this on instead of this. But anyway, let's just go with this and this and then make a render. I just used the wrong switch accidentally, but now the same thing happens. Uh, the software from this point of view makes a render. It generates this model, prepares this model, passes to the renderer, the renderer opens in a separate window. We will cover this as well, that there is two options in Arshline. You can either work with an integrated render, which is integrated into the project that, that will appear actually like a literal window inside the, your project. But if you decide to go with the standalone render, which I have chose, uh, chosen now, I can just tear it apart and I can move it to the other screen if I have to, which we actually have here. And I can work on the model. And if I uh, decided to use the real-time uh, rendering engine, then I can keep it appearing here and, and follow the changes which uh, happen on screen. Perfect. While this actually loads and finishes the render, let's talk about what's coming up next time. Because this, like I said, this was the second part of our webinar series, uh, focusing on, on bathroom design. The third part, that's going to be next, uh, next Tuesday.
Yeah. And it's going to be about kitchen design that entails um, creating cabinets and creating uh, customized uh, shelving systems and um, worktops and all kinds of equipment pieces. All sort, all, well, actually all sorts of furniture you will be able to, to create with those tools that are having caucuses. Yes. So I, I think I just terminate the rendering engine because this could break up the show a bit because uh, it's very demanding. Yes, it's quite heavy on the computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So keep that in mind that when you do do renders, now I have terminated it so it's not using the, the powers of the computer. But uh, when you uh, render, then you should you should do nothing else, even not streaming <laughs> like yes. we do now. Uh, because it, it really uses as much as uh, power uh, it can use the the CPU and the RAM. Perfect. These are some good advice. Yeah. But um, we are going to talk about this at the at the rendering stage, which is going to be the uh, the fifth and final uh, edition. Yes. Yes. Well, the fourth one, fifth is going to be about documentation, but yeah, that's we'll, right. we'll see. That's right. We we'll see uh, on the website. You can check out the schedule for the next coming uh, days and weeks, and we hope to see you next Tuesday at the same time, uh, th uh, three three o'clock p.m. Central European time, and yes. we'll talk about how to realize amazing kitchen projects. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time. See you. Goodbye. See you.